Welcome back to Frequency Bone Summer Music Connection 10. This is video two, The Art of the Student. Well, the last question on the first video that seemed to be the culminating point of the whole process of, is there even an art to the student? Um, what would they be? And we went through a whole engaging look into different possibilities of, for example, people have written books on the art of many things for a long time. But it seems they write that book after there's been a point in their lives where they've had such a bank of experience and hands-on work with that subject matter that through their experience and live engagement, they acquired some wisdom. And that wisdom can be applied to in a very artful manner a very skilled manner of getting certain kind of results from whatever their subject they're working on. And we talked about there's, you know, books on the art of trombone playing, brass playing, the art of teaching. But what about the art of the student? And it led me to the last question of that video, which was, what kind of student do you want to be? Or a student of what? Um, and I think that's very interesting. And I'm just going to make sure I'm saying that question right, because I wrote it down. Ah, what do you want to be a student of? <laughs> Knew I was missing something. I mean, those other questions are very valid, too. What kind of student do you want to be? But what do you want to be a student of? Um, and like I said, this video series, in a certain kind of way, um, I don't want to put anything on it. Well, this is a particular age category that someone could listen to it and get something from. Or you have to be a student to listen to this. I think teachers would probably get a lot out of this video. Um, ones that are starting out, or ones that are more experienced, or possibly even ones that are extremely experienced. I think they'd be able to see what I'm talking about. Um, it has a lot of value um, simply because it's true. <laughs> now, different people might have different takes on it, but every teacher would have to agree every student's different. So given that, how would you approach each student? But given that, could you give them some hints, some ways and means to activate the most that's in them at any given point in time? Now, see, there's a very important point. The student's going to grow and change. The teacher's going to grow and change. With that, and there's a relationship that's formed. So in certain ways, what I'm finding out to talk about the art of the student without talking about the art of the teacher is, in a certain way, difficult. Um, so Looking at the question, just to narrow it down a little bit today, 
looking at the question of what do you want to be a student of is very important. Now, someone might look at me and say, oh, come on. What do you mean? I'm here to take trombone lessons. What do you think I want to be a student of? I want to be a student of the trombone. <laughs> well, I wonder if an art teacher, you know, someone, well, it's interesting because we're talking about all the arts in this too. If someone who teaches oil painting and the student shows up or the students, sometimes they give classes on it too. Um, but a student or students show up and the, the painting teacher says, what do you want to be a student of? And the student or one of the students, if it's a class says, well, what do you mean? What do we want to be a student of? We're, we're here with our oils, our canvas, our paintbrushes. You see what I'm trying to say in this? And if not, keep following along because those are tools. And is there an art to certain way to use the paintbrush? I'm sure there are. Just like probably there's an art to great slide technique. But it won't be the same art necessarily for everybody. <laughs> That's the point. Okay? But are you there to, to uh, you want to be the art, you want to be a, a, a student of the trombone? Or is the trombone the paintbrush where, oh, we can get some great technique, we can draw some lovely shapes, but then what? Which brings a very interesting point. Looking at a lesson, a trombone lesson, a music lesson of any kind. Um, sorry about the darkness of my screen. I don't know what's going, it, the light and it turns on and off and who knows what's going on. Um, student comes and they've been playing a little bit, let's say a couple of years with someone and they go to the teacher and the teacher says, oh, well, you need some work on your tone. Your tone's unsteady. If they went to, let's say, a painting teacher and they tried to paint a stroke and the stroke was shaky. And maybe the painting teacher would say, oh, we need to work on your brush strokes. That's all obviously perfectly valid. The teacher has to have the responsibility to say, what kind of a student am I working with? What's motivating the student? Is it just technique or do they have something to say? Does it make any difference? I think so. Now, in the brass world, someone could have a terrific embouchure and just, you know, have a great range and a certain kind of real focused resonance in the sound and not paint. <laughs> so to speak, not much of a sonic picture where they're playing might not be very poetic or might not have a lot of personal feeling beyond, wow, that sounds correct. So what do we want to be a student of? Well, obviously, if we're going to learn to play an instrument, 
we have to be willing to take the instruction and we need to apply it. And this is where applying regular training comes in. And this is where the first law of the student comes in. Immediate application. So if you're at a lesson, okay, and you have an attitude of immediate application, you, something's going to happen. And you're going to remember it fresh as it's given to you in that transference. So that first law of the student is also part of, I think, the beginnings of the art of the student. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? It's that simple. However, as a teacher, if I see that someone does not have immediate application, I wonder about their motives and the reasons why they play. The motives and reasons why they play are very important because they're natural arts. would occur in a, in a natural way. It's a fascinating subject to me. I can only, really, I can think of all my students, right? As a matter of fact, one student came I talked to recently. They're a professional working terrific trombonist now, and they said to me, you know, I remembered at one point in my junior year, you said something about, are you desperate? I asked them that question. And I think at the time, and they were saying they didn't really totally know how to think about it. And, well, I'm not very, I'm not feeling very desperate because you think of someone desperate like, wow, I'm so thirsty, right? And they were a hardworking student. But maybe they were feeling satisfied in a certain kind of way with where they were at and how their progression was going that they didn't necessarily have an upfront feeling of desperateness. But they told me they think now because of certain circumstances and wanting to keep progressing and moving on in their personal art as well as in their workforce life employment life, they're feeling a little bit more desperate. And they said it's a good kind of desperate. That gets into the whole area of hunger. It gets into the area of, is it, is it so, is it such a great need? You are hungry for it. Because you actually, in a certain way, couldn't be another way. Now, maybe everyone's not like that. That's okay. Because this, part of this video student, <laughs> video student, <laughs> I feel like a video student. <laughs> part of this video series is to help create a situation inside of anybody because all teachers I'm sure would say you know in a certain way I'm still a student we entered the arts and we know that it's a lifelong process so the art of the student will always in a certain way be with us but it will change according to our experience and knowledge that keeps building on us and wisdoms that might appear over time. But we never want to lose that freshness, that newness. It might not be desperate anymore. But where art can really lead us 
is to that which created art in the first place. So now it looks like I'm going to go subtly off topic, but I'm not. Because whether you're a student or teacher at whatever age, you're alive. Look at the trees. Well, I don't know. Now, now <laughs> the video got really bright. You maybe can't see them very well. <laughs> but there's trees. You ever look at a leaf? That's incredible art. I was looking at a fly the other day in my car. It's extraordinary art. You might not like flies, but no human can put a fly together. There's a lot of working parts. Oh, we'd be so proud if we could do it. We can put together a car engine. People say, look at the art of the automobile. Look at that incredible technology. This car is state of the art. Someone once told me when I was driving around when I first got a car, um, when I got into the orchestra, I got a Nissan B210, this yellow little thing. And this one friend of mine who was very into cars, said, gosh, why don't you get another car? This car is just an appliance. They had like a Mercedes or, or something like that, or a Porsche or something. And, and they said, something more artful, state-of-the-art vehicle. State-of-the-art. Well, there's many different kinds of arts. And let's say your machine as a musician, the whole kit and caboodle, your diaphragm, your embouchure, everything about it as a brass player, let's just use this, will never be a BMW. It will never be a Lincoln Continental or a Mercedes Benz an incredible sports car. Maybe it'll be a Datsun B210. Or a Volkswagen or a Toyota Corolla. You know what? You know what's amazing to all of you out there? depending on why you play and what that playing process is, does to you in your life, maybe to some others. That is every bit as important. Did I ever think I was not having a great time with my mom or dad if we were driving around in some, what was it, a, a Valiant, Ford Valiant or something. An Oldsmobile, my uncle had some old Oldsmobile. Whoever think, shoot, we wish we could, we'd have such a greater time going to the beach and, and having so much fun if we could only be in a better car. That thought never crossed my mind. It's what's inside the car. Now, in all fairness, if the car kept getting a flat and, uh, you know, spark plugs went wonky and the whole exhaust pipe would fall off, well, that's going to definitely <laughs> grab your style in terms of being able to go somewhere. But don't miss my bigger point. These days I find that people are so concerned about having a Rolls Royce of a machine. That's all I hear. What a nice vehicle. That's a terrific vehicle. I wish it would go somewhere. And sometimes you hear both. 
And I always have appreciation for people who have just this extraordinary vehicle that I'll never have. And even in my greatest playing days, meaning what I mean by that, when I was younger and my body was much stronger and I could do different things, there were people who had, you know, a greater car than I did. First overlay, the machine. Oh, yeah. That's why I loved even teaching, watching the students. Oh, I wish, wait a minute. And I'd always learn from them. So, another law of the student in this art of the student. Do you learn from everything? Think about it. Do you learn from, if not everything, different kinds of things, and then see how it can, if some of it can apply to your playing. And that very principle makes it hard, and not many actually in my whole career, but a couple students that I can think of, that made it hard for them at first to really grasp where I was coming from. They don't see the magnificent magnificence of a wave or a leaf or cotton flying around in the sky. Or the clouds, they see it, but they don't see it as it relates to music and their journey as a musician, because they want to be a student of the trombone. And music isn't just confined to music. Have you ever heard music and say, I used to hear Rolf Smedvig play and his trumpet playing sounded like dancing. I'm not sure I've ever heard a brass player sound as much as like they were dancing as Rolf Smedvig. I can put other, someone sound like a beautiful oil painting. Catala sounded like a great Italian opera singer. Dennis Brain sounded just, I don't know, like, just almost like, and I used to think of Ralph Smedley this way too, almost like since they were blowing bubbles. So isn't it interesting how we compare, oh, or we look at sounds. This sound is a really fudgy, dark sound. This sound is, is warm, almost like a nice vanilla. Um, or we talk about, this color and that color, and we usually were confined to dark and bright. So as a student, you might have more of a confined thing for a while, but the sooner you can get to, you know, well, there's different kinds, and even use yourself as an example. Another art of the student or law of the student, use your own playing to see different things. Don't pick up your horn and go, God, what a horrible tone today. That doesn't sound like my teachers. You can say, well, it's, it's kind of far away today from what I'd like to sound like. But what are the qualities of that sound that sounds far away? In other words, are we noticing change and or differences? about that for a thought until the next time we meet.